having some technical difficulties before. So we left off um, where Jonathan, Mr. Perez Galvan, was telling us about uh, the content. And uh, we were able to get some content about what he does. So for those of you who are living under a tree, yo te libre, and good luck. <laughs> it happens. That means the pandemic sucks for you, especially. Damn. And for anybody else who are experiencing secondary symptoms of God knows what. So um, here's one of the things that uh, Jonathan does, which is very, very interesting to say the least. I was just like, really? Okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay, downloads. Oof. Hold on. All right. So, yeah, the the video is very interesting because why, why did you choose a, a weird looking hand? Is the it, before I, I'm gonna give some context. It's like a hand or whatever it is or isn't playing piano. It, <laughs> I, for, I forgot what video it was for a second. So I was like, what are you talking about? What, what are you? I was like, <laughs> He's like I was about to, I was about to address the public and be like, clearly she's lost her mind. And we need help. <laughs> Um, Thanks very much for your support. <laughs> so I, because that thing freaked me out because I, that one, I remember that one in particular because it was like three in the morning and I'm, I'm tired. I'm dead tired. I was like, I just mm -hmm. want to go to sleep, but I can't sleep because my mind's still kind of running. So I'm right. scrolling and I'm scrolling and I saw that as I'm scrolling past and I'm like, I did not just see a ham playing a piano. So I had to go back to it and there's, there's just this slab of, of meat playing a piano and it freaked me out and i was like i gotta i gotta do something with this i gotta talk about it and so that was the inspiration for that one was just weird middle of the night uh insomnia and the fact that somebody's playing with their food it looks like a deranged version of it from the adams family but here we go <laughs> enjoy everybody this is what this is one of them this is celebrating you moving in. Hola, buenas tardes. Uh, no, I'm not going to be coming to the housewarming party later because that's for when you're breaking in a home for the first time. And clearly this place has already been broken in by something. So no gracias, pero listen, representative Latinos against I got to tell you, es la primera vez. It's the first time that I see el espíritu de Michael Jackson haunting a home. I don't know what you did, but probably should never do that again if you pissed off the king of pop. So, you know. But my recommendation, you're going to leave little rhinestones out. Hopefully he follows them and leaves. But as you know, you're going to hee hee right on out of there. Go find a new place to live, maybe in a new town. No, Sam. For the guy that helped him move in, you did a good job as a friend. You helped him move in. Now they can find other friends to help him move out. These are no longer your friends. You find better friends, okay? Bueno, put a little Vicks under your nose. Drink that Gatorade. Rub the egg. Dios los bendiga. Bio for merch. So that's video number one. Mm. And the video that we were talking about, which again was absolutely hilarious, <laughs> was this one. So just to get a little context on, about what he's talking about. So uh, here you go. Enjoy, everybody. There you go. Freaks me out. What I want to stop this. No, I don't want to shake uh, Robert's limb. Uh, but listen, representative Latinos against And at first I saw this and I thought it was one of those perritos, one of those little dogs that like your family has. That's like blind in both eyes. It's missing fur. It can't walk anymore. And it's just surviving day to day, hoping for the best. I was like, oh, que bonito. How cute. Like, you know, it's like ancient. And then I saw no features whatsoever. And I was like, oh. That's carne asada, um, which is weird because I've never been afraid of something that I want to eat at the same time. Very conflicted. So my recommendation, get some tortillas. Go ahead and grill that bad boy up. We're going to make some tacos. We're going to put a little Vaseline under our nose so that we don't smell the sin coming off of that slab of meat and call it a day. So, Dios los bendiga, best of luck, and uh, check my comments. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Carne asada, huh? That's a good one. 
listen, there's, you know, as, as Latinos, Latinas, Latins, there's not a lot of things that we won't actively try to eat. Um, so I don't care if I'm scared of it. I'll try to eat it in some way, shape or form. <laughs> There, that's what that's what Tabasco and Cholula's for. <laughs> Tabasco and Churrasco. Okay. So um where did it come the whole thing to apply VIX on everything, which is hilarious, by the way? Because mi abuela, Dios la bendiga, my grandma, VIX for whatever you got going on. There wasn't a single time that I can remember in my life that I mentioned that I felt sick and she didn't give me VIX for it, whether it was me enfermé de la tos, tengo un aire, me duele el codo, me duele la espalda, me duele la cabeza, ay, que me rompieron el corazón, me corté, whatever you got, grandma's got VIX for it. Like, that was that was my abuela. Wow. So I figure if VIX can work for a broken heart, if it can work for a migraine, if it can work for a stab wound, it's got to work for los spookies, right? So that's where it came from. No, but um, to be honest with you, it's the same thing with um, Dominicans. We're okay. like that. Um, mira, te pica el cráneo, ponte un poco de VIX. Tiene una, una pinilla de vinito, ponte un poco ponte de VIX. Ponte VIX. Yep, si yep. tiene... <laughs> I'm sorry to say this. <laughs> si tiene hongo en los pies, ponte VIX. <laughs> Pero es verdad, para todo VIX. Like, like you. you know, o... Oh, oh. I was dying when that low key happened. I was like, no, that's too much. That, that's Vicks. just too much. I cannot. Vix for everything. And you I used it? to like look at my grandmother, like, really, Wella? She's like, yeah, eso no es nada. Pero, ¿sabes lo peor? The worst part is that it would help. That's what made me mad, was that it shouldn't have fixed it, but it did. And that's why I was like, ¿sabes qué? Vix cura todo. Vix works for everything. Um, you know, we would we would take it in a spoon and melt it in our tea. Like, si tenías dolor de garganta. Uh, she would, yeah, just random things like that. And it would work. That's what made me so mad about it. Like, she, <laughs> like, you know, and here's the thing, too. No sé si, si otra gente que va a esto can relate to it. You never got VIX. You never went and bought VIX. You just always had VIX. And there was always a giant tub of it. That you it just had happens in your family. to work at the time. It just happened to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And your family just has this VIX that they've handed down for like three generations. And it never empties. No matter how much you use, it's still full. It's crazy. No, es verdad. Tiene, tiene razón. Um, there's a, but then the fabuloso. That, that cracked <laughs> me up. I was like, fabuloso? Is my guy serious with the fabuloso? Porque la estaba pensando, and I was like, what, what other Hispanic things, like, do we use? Like, what's something that, regardless if you're Mexican, Guatemalan, Ecuadorian, Dominican, Republican, what's something that, like, every household has? And then I thought, fabuloso. Everybody uses fabuloso, whether we know it or not, for whatever reason. I think it's the name que nos atrae porque es fabuloso. We use it. And so I started implementing fabuloso uh, in my comedy. Uh, more than anything, I'm, I'm looking at things that... Todos los latinos tenemos en común things that we have in common, sure. you know, fabuloso, or que tu abuela te pega with uh, with la chancla, or que te pega con con la cuchara de madera, you know, when she's cooking. Oh my God! Don't even remind me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know, every now and again, I hear somebody like mixing a salad bowl, and I hear that wooden spoon hit, and I cringe. Like I think my abuela's gonna come out of the woods and hit me. Like it's one of those things where we've all experienced it, mm -hmm. and so. You know, I'm, I'm tapping into that generational trauma that we all have. No, pero um, yo creo que uh, I'm going to say it in Spanish. I'm going to go deep in Spanish. <laughs> eh, hay una cosa que los latinos no les gusta hablar. Y eso es eh, trauma eh, de generaciones. Yeah. Y no sé por qué, si eso es el cuco, si eso es la llorona, si eso es algo tan tabú. Uh -huh. que no sé y yo no sé por qué la gente tiene miedo de exponer su de ser sensible like, todo el mundo llora of course we all do pero tú crees que yo voy a llorar, ¿tú crees que yo voy a llorar delante de ti no jamás en la vida no. yo soy un macho fuerte yo soy una hembra fuerte y, y creo que también por eso pero es, es más de eso um, porque yo tuve esta conversación con mi familia actually no hace mucho tiempo um, los traumas y más los traumas uh, de ese estilo, de ese tipo, parte de la razón por la cual no hablamos de eso 
es, no sé si se, si se han dado cuenta uh, de esto, pero el, eh, la familia es lo más importante, right Y nunca sí. puedes poner la familia en mal. Nunca no, pones jamás. la familia en mal. Jamás. No importa lo que pase, no importa los problemas, no importa la situación, nunca pones la familia en mal. So, aceptando que hay traumas generacionales, es aceptando que hay cosas que nos hacen que no somos perfectos y nos uh -huh. pone en mal, aunque sea nomás entre nosotros. Claro. Pero esa es, es parte de, de la razón por la cual no vemos esos traumas y porque no, no hacemos nada al respecto, en, en, en mi opinión, por lo menos. Um, you know, uh, uh -huh. like, apenas el otro día estaba hablando con mi familia y, y <ríe> yo tenía unos juguetes de Power Rangers de, del 1993. Sí. Porque claro. para mí Power Rangers era lo máximo. You know, I, lo, I loved them. Era, era lo que yo yeah, crecí viendo. Um, pero esos juguetes se quedaron en México cuando nosotros nos vinimos para acá. Y mm. tomen en cuenta, yo me vine de México a los cinco años. A los cuatro años, perdón. O so, me vine oh. nene, me vine bebé. Y apenas el otro día estamos hablando de eso. Y en la casa en donde se quedaron, se los robaron, según. Eso me dijo mi familia. Oh, se robaron los juguetes. Se robaron un montón de cosas ya no existen. Pero luego me di cuenta que a lo mejor nos los, no se los robaron. O sea, yo me enojé con mi familia porque les dije, ustedes no entienden que esto es lo único que yo tengo de mi juventud, de mi niñez. Like, that's all I got. You guys se vinieron ya de adultos, vinieron una vida entera. So, like, there's a little part of my inner child, de mi niño, de que, like, I'm never going to be able to heal, and you guys are withholding this from me. And it might not seem like a big deal, and it's not, but lo mismo es, es, that's all I've got going on. So, there's these things that, like, mentiras, algo que me cae que mal y no sé si ustedes lo hacen. Mienten por cosas chiquitas. Like the dumbest... Oh, sí. La, la mentira piedadosa. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Pero son cosas tan insignificantes que me sí. caen mal. Por ejemplo, el, mi mamá, mi, mi abuela, Dios la bendiga, se cayó el otro día. Se cayó. No se lastimó, oh, wow. gracias a Dios. Pero, pero, pero ya está, ya está, you know, mayor. So, 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 sí le dolió. Y una de mis tías habló y me dice, ay, ¿cómo están todos? No le digas que me caí, dile que estoy bien. Pero, pero mami, es tu hija, ¿por qué no le vas a decir que te, que te lastimaste? No, 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 porque se va a preocupar. Ok, no, todos estamos bien, bla, bla, bla. Uh -huh. o, 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 o qué pasó el otro día también. O que estaba, ahí está, estaba yo y mi abuela a un lado. Y le llamaron al celular de mi abuelo. Y agarró el teléfono y me dijo, toma, diles que no estoy. Dijo, pero papi, si es tu primo, si es like, like, habla con él. No, no quiero, no estoy. Dile que, dile que me fui. I was like, why, why won't you just talk to people? Like, why, like, this is, they're calling you on your phone for you, dude. So, son cositas así, pero, pero las traumas de generación. Sí, tuve, mira, eso era aplicable cuando uno tenía el teléfono, cuando tenía pegado el teléfono a la pared, el número uno. Sí. Número dos, cuando tenía dinero para tener cordless, Sí, inalámbrico. ¿Verdad? Era aplicable decir, oh no, es Vilma, toma. Sí. <laughs> toma sí. La con Vilma. I'm like, why? I didn't even like Vilma the whole thing. Ni la conozco. That's <laughs> the conozco. worst. Es lo peor también cuando ellos están hablando oh, con un primo mira, hermano. Mira, eh, el médico me está llamando, toma. Pero yo no estoy enferma. <laughs> ¿Pero qué tiene que ver conmigo? Exactly. O si Dile, no, diles que, que estoy enfermo. Diles oh, tú. mira, eh, tú hablas buen inglés. I said, yo nada más tengo 10 años, qué, qué buen inglés sé yo. No, es, pero tú puedes explicarme lo que el doctor me está diciendo. Y, y eso a, es a, que... Mira, yo ni tomo notas en la escuela, yo tengo que tomar notas yo, ahora. Apenas estoy pasando oh, a la escuela, quiero es que like, te tome okay, notas espérate. ¿Qué usted dijo? Ella necesita beber más <ríe> agua, ok. Que toma la patilla, la, la que, que... ¿Cómo se escribe? ¿De ya yeah. Ok. What else? Eh, no, y, luego, y luego cuando lo stop, llevas al doctor. No, my favorite, just, just the, the recommendations. Eh, deja de comer puerco, ok. <laughs> It's like, ok. No more chuletas for you. No, <laughs> nada de chicharrón tampoco. No, I'm sorry, you were going to say? Pero, uh, one of the things too, um, which is funny that you mentioned it, people don't realize, people outside of being bilingual, don't realize the stress that a lot of us have as, as the younger part of the generation having to translate everything. Teniendo que llevar a uh, tus abuelos, tu mamá, tu papá, cualquier persona, a un doctor. Ahora yo me tengo que ser responsable para, para tu condición física 
That's a lot for a person. Y más cuando empezamos chiquitos, you know, yeah. doing the translating. Pero más que nada, creo que lo que me cae mal. No, I like, for example, sí. like, uh, no, pero es, eh, tienes razón. Porque, por ejemplo, para mí fue, <laughs> la abuela dijeron, le dijeron a la abuela, mira, no comas pollo frito, ni como papa frita, y que sé mm -hmm. cuánto. Nada frito. And then we left the office. I'm like, lo abuela, primero. Yo, quiero, yo quiero tres alitos con papa frita. Y un refresco. Está ahí, mimito, ahí, mimito. No, 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 cuatro, dos. Está en especial, está tres pesos. Like, a, todavía ni terminamos con el doctor y ya estás pensando en lo que te dijo de que no deberías de comer. Come on. No, pero... exactly. Ese, bueno, no, usted no tiene la salud bien, soy yo que la tengo. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. O, lo, o lo peor de todo, lo peor para mí, porque si algo tengo es que no tengo mucha paciencia. No tengo mucha paciencia. Ya, ya que tengo 30 años, que soy mayor, no tengo mucha paciencia. So, de vez en cuando todavía llevo mi, mi abuela al doctor. Y, you know, el doctor nos pregunta, oh, ¿cuánto, you know, ¿cuánto tiempo tiene con este problema? Y le pregunto, abuela, ¿cuánto tiempo? Pues mira, el otro día le digo, no, 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 no quiero tu historia entera. ¿Cuánto tiempo tienes con este problema? Pues déjame decirte, mira, es que el otro día le está diciendo a tu papá, mi hijo, me siento mal, ¿verdad? Y luego comí una chuletita y como que me hizo daño. Digo, vieja, ¿cuánto tiempo tienes con el dolor? Ah, tengo como una semana. Es lo que quiero, nomás dime, contéstame lo que te estoy preguntando. ¿Para qué me estás diciendo lo que hiciste hace tres meses y no tiene que ver nada con lo de ahorita? Why are we going through your entire life history right now? No, mi favorito. Eh. No, a ese es cuando te dicen, ¿cuántos años tienes tú? Oh, yo, por ejemplo, yo tengo 41. Ah, entonces, desde que tú estás como tienes 10, 11 años, que son ya hace 30 años, yo tengo esta condición. Ya. Yeah. You were like 60. What the fuck? Hey. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. What the fluff? What do you mean? Ya. Yeah. Like, y ahora que usted viene a, a preocuparse. A <laughs> like, Why are we dealing with this now? Like, what? What, what does it matter? <laughs> Ay, Dios. How, how far did we fall off the slope before you yeah. realize? Ah, you know, la cosa está mala. That's my Me lo dice o te lo creo. ¿Cuál es? Yeah, like mi abuelo. No, 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 I have to tell you. Um, yeah, and this is the thing, like, um, another bilingual person will understand it. It's, it, there, again, there's a lot of stuff that you're just like, you've never gone through that? Really? You sure about that? It's interesting. It's interesting to see how the different experiences are for people like like um you know uh, uh more americanized caucasian people you know it's like oh i was diagnosed with with x y and z leukemia cancer and they're very open about their struggles and their journey what yes. they're going through what yes. that looks like but un latino will never tell you what the doctor told them like hey no les digas a nadie like why like no quiero que se preocupen or no hay que pena Pena de qué? It's not like you chose to get cancer. It's not like you chose this. Like, pena de, de, de cual cosa? Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, I know, pero que va a decir la gente? Mami, pero who gives a shit about la gente? Sorry. Who cares about la Who cares the sh about la gente? But again, exactly. that goes back to nunca pongas la familia en mal. And like, God forbid that you're human and you get sick or mm -hmm. you hurt yourself. Like, you cannot show any kind of weakness. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of the big things that... that I struggled with for a long time, mm -hmm. pero now growing up in this new generation and having a son of my own, I was like, I don't want him to go through what I went through. I don't want him to feel like he has to repress his emotions or to feel like he can't express himself. So like, if he cries, I let him cry and I let him talk to me about what he's crying about. He's little, but he understands. And you know, and sometimes it's like, hey, por qué llora? It's like, I don't know. It's like, that's okay. You're frustrated. I get it. Let's take some time and let's let's figure it out. But you know, mm -hmm. before when we used to cry, pa qué lloras? ¿Quieres que, ¿Quieres que te dé una razón para llorar? Verás, vas a llorar de verdad. Like, Basically, like, yes. And that's now why we're so detached. That's why now like, we watch our, our older family members and it's like, I don't care what you're going through because like, you didn't care what I was going through, fam. So it's, it's very interesting uh, to see that dynamic. But part of the reason why I do Latinos Against Spooky-ish, I remember this time, uh, yes. is because in some way, shape, or form, I'm I'm trying to find humor in a lot of the things that we didn't find funny then. Uh, I'm trying to find exactly. humor in a lot of things that can be traumatic. But I want people to understand that, hey, I promise you, as isolated as we felt, you weren't going through that alone. 
you weren't dealing with this solo. Some way, shape, or form, todos nosotros went through the exact same things. Um, and it's okay to talk about them now. And it's okay for us to, to make fun of it because we have to. If you can't laugh at something, I truly don't think you can heal from it. So No, absolutely not. It's true. You have to be able to laugh at yourself even if you're, like, scared. 100%. And honestly, um, circling back to what you said about, like, for example, I don't know for some reason why European, Anglo-Saxons, or, you know, white Americans, for the lack of a better word, why is it that when they come out and say, I have X, Y, Z, you know, condition, all of a sudden, I oh, tell me more, Chad. Oh, it's so tough for you. You're so cute. Oh my gosh, you have such a great six pack. But you have what again? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Chad, you have ADHD. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. You're so brave, Chad. But then Pedro, who has a barriga and you know has <laughs> wife and kids and is stressed out and works a bullshit. Oh, I have ADHD, man. It's tough. Sometimes I zone out when people talk to me, but I remember to listen to for instructions, especially if it's related to my job. The puede eso, I don't know. Right. Pero es flojo, o es yeah. uh, burro, o cualquier cosa. So it's, it's funny how that stigma, or even even to, to broaden the spectrum a little bit more, like you said, oh my God, Chad, like you're so brave for fighting cancer. Exactly. Pero si fulanita de tal has cancer, like, oh my God, like what a burden on the healthcare system and we have to pay out of it in our taxes. So I was like, exactly. okay, so it's only it's only convenient and it's only brave if they look like you. But if it's another exactly. human being that came from exactly. somewhere else, now it's a burden. Even uh, in social media too. You know what I mean? Like yes. you'll have people that love what you do and you'll have people that dislike what you do. Absolutely. And I and I and I went into this knowing that. I went into this knowing very well that people were gonna be upset about a few things. And I have gotten a couple people that are like, really, bro, like like you're you know, you're you're making fun of these things and like you're using this as humor and you're setting us back. And I'm like, but I'm not setting us back. I'm not saying you know, never have my jokes been like, oh, we're hopping the border and we're immigrants working a field. That's never been my humor. My humor has been things that we've all lived. Um you know, that's that there's a difference between using stereotypes and using real life experience. I'm using real life experience. Hold on. <laughs> this is a funny one here. This is this is one of my favorite. Sola, Example. A quien le dice sola? Hola, buenas tardes. Um, listen, if you go into a Hispanic household and there isn't already a light on that they left, then I can't trust that, okay? Like the kitchen light wasn't on. Everybody knows that the light you leave on when you leave. Uh, so clearly you're just inviting Los Spookies uh, and I'm not comfortable with that anymore, okay? So I'm gonna just go get some Jack in the Box or something. But anyways, Representative Latinos Against Spooky. Mira, I know that everybody says, que el amor de una madre no tiene fin. The love of a mother has no end. But you just proved that it does. And that draws a hard line at seeing a spooky stuff because you just left your daughter behind. Te valió madre, you didn't care. You're like, sabes que mija, Dios te bendiga. You're gonna figure this out on your own. You got yourself in this situation. I'm gonna survive and I'm gonna make another baby. Um, but my recommendation for this, if we're gonna keep the child, we're gonna have to clean the whole house. You know, a full cleanse, right? So we're gonna get fabuloso. We're gonna get uh, pine sol, pinasol. We're gonna yes, get some son. hacks. We're gonna make una salsa de molcajete because that way all of the spicy fumes are gonna get in the air and the espíritu is gonna be like, ay Dios, I can't see, no puedo ver, me está dando una, una grura. You're right, and then we're gonna move the spooky right out, okay? And if we need to, we're gonna have to baptize her again in a tub of Vicks, some Yodex, vaselina, okay? And then sprinkle a little bit, just a little bit of fabuloso on her just to make sure that she smells good afterwards. So, Dios los bendiga, best of luck. Take care of yourselves. Remember, if you heard it, no, you didn't. She's way too comfortable in the dark. That's that one, but there, but wait, there's more. Yeah, there's this, always this, more. this one. I was just like, no, you've got to be kidding me. This this is a good one too. I oh. here you cheese. go. Cheese, <laughs> What you doing? Yeah. What you see? Yeah, Papa. What? Who are you saying hi to? Dude, you need to 
stop that. You're freaking me out. Come on. Hola, buenas tardes. Uh, listen, I used to see like a spooky videos and everything pop up and I'm like, what, you just happened to be recording at the right time and something showed up? Uh, but uh, the more I do this, the more I realize that the spookies don't give a shit. They're just going to show up like a no-knock warrant. Okay, so thanks for that lesson. But anyway, representative Latinos against spooky shit. You shouldn't have gone and investigated. I understand wanting to keep your child safe. I totally agree with that. Uh, but from here on out, we're going to be cleaning his glasses con un poquito fabuloso. That way, he's not going to be able to see any spookies through the lens. And my recommendation is one for your room. That fan, we're going to tie some string to the blades. We're going to tie some chanclas to it. We're going to slather those in Vicks as well. That way, when you go to sleep at night, turn it on. They'll spin around, create a little aura of protection around you. Okay, and the spooky's going to try to come close. And then pop, pop, pop. They're just going to keep getting hit by the chanclas. You're going to have your brown Jesus candle nearby. And then, of course, you're going to have your little spritzer bottle of Fabuloso with some tequila in there. Tss, tss, tss. You can just spray away all your problems. Okay, so Dios los bendiga. Best of luck. Take care of yourselves. If you heard it, no, you didn't. Oh, goodness. So the tagline that you have, if you heard it, no, you didn't. Or if you didn't see it, no, you didn't. How did that come about? It was, it was, to add to the it was one of my original videos and it was, um, mm -hmm. it was like the third or fourth video. I can't remember when it really came up mm -hmm. with it, but oh, I came up with that because like, if you heard something, no, you didn't pretend you didn't hear anything. And that's, that's what we would do at least in my household, right? Like, mm -hmm. I had my primos over and we were sleeping in the middle of the night. Hey, que fue ese ruido? Not my problem. That's what it was. Everybody would just go right back to bed. Not a single one of us would get up. We'd acknowledge it first. Like, hey, oíste eso? Nah, dude. <laughs> nah, bro. Go back to bed. And everybody would go right conmigo. back to sleep. Conmigo, no, no. And so it was, it was, that became just part of the staple. If, if you heard it, no, you didn't. Because um, I truly believe we are better off just not investigating and just leaving things be as they are but we are too curious as people um mm -hmm. just as humans not even not even people of certain cultures so just just leave it alone um it's true it's true we are very curious people i'm not gonna lie all right so, let's call it <laughs> <she's Moses. laughs> i i don't want to get in trouble with my people <laughs> you shouldn't get in trouble with your people <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna write down the following. It might look backwards, just gonna tell you from now. Okay, so this person, what is your solution? It says here, eh, la, Llorona. la Llorona. Okay, well, if I see La Llorona, first of all, I'm already outside, which is a big no-no, because it's the middle of the night. I already made a mistake. Um, my recommendation for that one, I'm going to go inside. I'm going to put a little bit of Vicks underneath my, my eyes. That way I have to keep them close so it doesn't burn. And I'm going to just go straight to sleep. That way I can't see it. I don't have to deal with it. That's somebody well, else's problem. Basically, you'll have the most cl the clearest sinuses you've ever had you'll in your life. The clearest sinuses and the best sleep ever because I'm not going to be able to open up my eyes. You know, me van a llorar because of the spicy from the, from the Vicks. That way I can just go straight to sleep. Okay, how about this one? I probably misspelled it. A chupacabra. El chupacabra. Fun fact about a chupacabra. I don't know if you know this. That one originated in uh, Puerto Rico originally. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The original sightings were Puerto Rican, not Mexican. Um, I don't know how he made it off that island, but, you know, he's ours now, so we're taking him. <laughs> he's <laughs> not on an airplane. He's... <laughs> It's not kind of airplane. He shipped himself con uno de los platanos, bro. Hijo, me voy. Me Bye. Voy. Oh, muchacho, pero yo me voy de aquí. Bye. Yo, yo tengo que viajar. Sorry. Yo tengo otros <laughs> continentes para azutar. <laughs> uh, pero chupacabra, like his name says, chupacabra. He's going to eat your, your goats, not if they're slathered in Vicks, and you put a little bit of fabuloso around them. So he's not going to taste very good to them. You got to take this care of them. You got to give them some baths. You got to dip them. You got to baptize them. And then that way, you're good. All right, this is a fun, this is a more Americanized one. A ver, a ver, a ver, Chucky. El Chucky. El Chucky. In Qué interesante. <laughs> Pero like any small child that misbehaves, con la chancla, bro. Like el, el, la chancla will take any spirit out of anything, okay? So you're just going to beat that thing with la chancla, put a little bit of Vicks on it for some extra oomph, and then hopefully el espíritu flies right out of his little red head. Oh, Jesus, that's a good one. I like this one. Oh. Listen, if, if La Chancla could fix my attitude, it can fix a uh, possessed doll, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. El Cuco. 
¿Qué es el cuco? ¿Quién es cuco? El cuco. El cuco. El, what's, I don't know that one. Really? Okay, so el, el cuco for us is like the boogeyman in DR times. Oh, el cucuy. El, well, cucuy, but we call it el cuco. Okay, nosotros le decimos el cucuy. Oh, cucuy, go ahead. Ah, so it's the same thing. Oh, interesting. I learned something today. So uh, el cucuy, mira, el cucuy vive en lo oscuro. He lives in the dark, right? So you're going to have to have your kitchen light on. That stays on. The little light that's over your stove, that's 24-7. That should never go out, first of all. Okay. Second of all, you're going to put some Vicks on all your door handles. So that way, if he tries to grab it, it's too slippery and he can't get inside your room. You shouldn't be sleeping with an open door. No mm -hmm. Latino sleeps with an open door. Closed all the time, Okay. And then again, if you have a fan, you're going to put those chanclas on it. It's going to spin around. See, no, you're going to keep one under your pillow. If anybody wakes you up, cucuy, child, parent, husband, chanclas are right across the face. Doesn't matter. If you're dumb enough to wake me up at three in the morning, you're dumb enough to get hit with a chancla. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is a good one. All right, here we go. Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger. Ooh, mira. Freddy Krueger gets you in your sleep, right? And you yeah. know you have your most crazy dreams after some tequilazos. So you're going to have some tequila. You're going to go to bed. He's not going to be able to know what's up or what's down. Are you in his dream? Is he in your dream? You don't know, dude. And then you're just going to dream of the biggest chancla in the world, and you're going to beat the crap out of him with it. He's locked in there with you. You're not locked in there with him. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, oh, this is a good one. Last but not least, of course, this know. one. I... I'm, I'm gonna fix these. Hold on, Jason Voorhees. Good old Jason Voorhees. For those of you who don't know Jason Voorhees, Friday the Thirteenth. He comes from the lakes. As you know, Latinos, we're not gonna go in the middle of an ocean. We're not gonna go in the middle of a lake. If I can't touch the bottom with my feet, I don't want to deal with it. So, we're gonna put in the lake. We're gonna go ahead and throw some menudo in there. That way, it's gonna be too spicy for him. I know he he doesn't have the proper guts for it. It's gonna get him indigestion. He's not gonna be able to come back up. And then just wait for him at the surface with the chancla. Every time he tries to come up, just beat him back down. Or the wooden spoon. The wooden spoon does more damage than a chancla. However, only a grandma can wield a wooden spoon properly. So you're going to have to get your abuela out there somehow. Well, um, I could also offer, um, you could put a block of camphor. Put it in the spicy hot stuff. There you go. Make sure you put some tequila. Burn it and just be like, here you go. So now we're making so now we're making a Hispanic Molotov cocktail. See, I love this. Look at you. <laughs> That's all you need. You just need a little ingenuity and a little bit of fear, and you're willing to overcome. Just a things. bit, just a bit. Just a little so, bit. So okay. Welcome to This Is Your Spotlight with whom? Me, Eurydice Roman. And today I am here with a lovely, fantastic guest. If you have not heard of her, I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry. And translation for those of us who who don't know who don't know Spanish. Um, you must be living under a rock or underneath the earth that you haven't heard of her. So, here we go. I have ladies Diana de la Cruz. Ladies she Diana. Is, ladies Diana. She is the incredible author of a book called Unloving Me, a memoir of a girl from Washington Heights. So, uh, Washington Heights, stand up. You got one of your peoples on. Mama, mama. Donde está la gente? Donde está la bulla? Donde está la celebración? the entire title. <laughs> Vamos. Take the A or the one uptown, 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 baby, uptown, baby. We get yeah. down, baby, for the hey. crown, baby. Hey, yes. So, this is what's interesting about the entire situation with ladies. Explain to us the okay, when was like the what inspired you to start writing in the first place? 
Well, thank you so much for having me. You are just an inspiration and I am so grateful for the love and the support. I love to be here. Um, yeah, so I've been writing for a long, long time. Um, at first, I used it in my childhood to just, you know, journal. And that was my, my way of escaping, uh, you know, whatever was happening in my inner world. Um, I loved books. I loved poetry. I'm an avid reader. And... Um, but it wasn't until 2017 when I began to start posting or sharing my work uh, with the public. I opened a Facebook account and a year later, um, this um, rest in peace, he just passed away. Uh, this Spaniard uh, publisher um, reached out to me to participate in an international um, poetry competition. And part of the prize that was that you were going to be able to publish a book. And that is how my first book um, is birthed, Entre el Amor y Otras Cosas del Destino, uh, was first published um, in 2018. Um, through uh, MBR uh, Publishing in Spain. Um, mm -hmm. I then translated the, the Spanish copy into English of, of Love and Other um, Matters of Fate. Mm -hmm. And I just, um, I felt very blessed that just a year after opening, you know, my Facebook poetry account, um, publishing published a year later and mm -hmm. yeah so i just i just love poetry and i i love writing and i really just want to write beautiful stories true stories of people that i think are pretty amazing and their stories should be shared and that's important to be honest with you. We all need to like represent the human experience in its entirety and people, you know, have fallen short of doing that. Some people choose so many different mediums of expression. Some people do it through a podcast. Some people do it through short films. Some people do it through long films. Some people do it through plays, um, even through dance. Right. And, you know, it all goes back to being an author and writing. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Look at Shakespeare. Do you think William Shakespeare, when he started out, okay, you know, his stuff was like, oh, you know, was amazing? No. he. I'm sure he had his trials and errors. And all of a sudden, he's like, you know what? I think I should be writing stuff of my day and of my time period. And it's going to matter. Whether if it's not now, it's going to be hundreds of years later. And... We're still reading Shakespeare. Well, at least I thought we still were. I, no sé. I don't know about the new curriculum with the kids now. No sé. But <laughs> um, yeah. Especially not in Florida. A sheer half of Florida. <laughs> I, but yeah, I mean, what is art is art and must be expressed through whatever medium and channels come through. To me, I think it's important to elevate our stories. Mm -hmm. um, what we're sharing. I think that there's a lot of brilliant minds out here. Um, and again, I don't do it from the perspective of uh, I'm going to be, you know, a Shakespeare or Una Isabel Allende. I want to be Lady Diana de la Cruz, the author, the poet, you know, um, in the future, who knows? I'll have screenplays and whatever. I don't want to be boxed in. I think that um, I have an array of, uh, my talent is multidimensional and I want to exploit it and I want to explore it and I want to share it. Um, mm. For so long, my art was mine because it was, it was my way of healing. You know, a lot of um, the challenges that I faced 
So for me, my, my writing was very personal. And it, it, it wasn't until my father passed that I said, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it out there. And, um, and poetry is something that comes very natural to me. I look mm -hmm. at the world in a very uh, unique way. And I think it comes through my poetry and that's what I wanna be remembered by. But I also wanna write stories of women like you, <laughs> women like me, my mother, our mothers, you know, who often won't get voiced in the large cinema or in the, in, in the literary world because we're not writing those stories or, you know, we're not the big names, but I don't care about the big names. I care that if my work is able to reach someone and it affects them and it impacts them and it makes them think and it makes them love and it makes them think of the world in a different way than I've accomplished my goal. Absolutely true. And I think that's all we want when you are in the arts. Right. Honestly, you're just trying right. to elevate an experience and see who you can reach. Exactly. Yes. And it's really difficult because sometimes you're just like, I know I've gone through it and I, I put myself through the ringer. How many other people have gone through it? Anybody? Hello? I'm right here. Estamos juntos, estamos aparte. ¿Cuál es? Y esa es la cosa, that once you start sharing the work, you begin to see how common our experiences are. But that's the thing, you know, when, when we keep things to ourselves, when we, when we shut down our inner voices, when we, and there's a, 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 an enormous amount of, um, hmm. There's, I'm, yo te dije que iba a pasar. <laughs> I get so nervous. But there's a ton of reasons why that happens, right? Why we block out our voices. But then once you step into it, you see that, you know what? My experience is not so different than yours. Had we been yeah. talking, we probably could have helped each other heal. Or, yeah. you know, I could have learned something from the way you healed or vice versa. And, and that's what I find so powerful about the arts and whether it's, you know, dancing, podcasting, writing, you know, uh, cinema, the theater, um, mm -hmm. we're, we're able to, to really connect on our humanity and our, and, and how similar we all are. Yes. And you spoke about the inspiration for the first book. So you also talked about the book that you did in 2018 and then in 2017 you started the Facebook page yeah. and 2018 you published your first book. Yeah. Now, for, what is your current song inspiration for this book? Um, so my current song of inspiration for this book was trauma. <laughs> <laughs> I guess everybody has. <laughs> it's a um, it's a coming book. It's a coming and a page story. It's based on my life. Um, I speak in depth about my journey growing up in the Heights, but mainly. Uh, so basically, as the community is expanding, so am I. Of course. It's really empowered me. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I go through these huge years, reuniting with my mother, but I also talk a lot about trauma, childhood mm -hmm. traumas, about I guess all of them from you know, physical, emotional, um, sexual abuse and then how I managed to heal myself by integrating mm -hmm. um all the concepts that I have learned through metaphysics, through, um, you know, the psychology of my emotions, right. and all the spiritual work that I do, um, hmm. my own healing, and how the work that I was doing in the community 
was also in a way in me simultaneously. Um, so I am, it, it's very raw uh, in that, you know, I don't shy away from any of these experiences. Um, I, I hope that I, I came out as authentic as possible, but more importantly, that mm-hmm. someone else is going through similar experiences can find redemption mm-hmm. and a path to healing themselves. That's our only job for mm-hmm. this, in our journey. Our journey is ourselves, mm-hmm. within ourselves, um, the responsibility of feeding everybody else without becoming the inner work ourselves, and that's mm-hmm. the best process. So I mm-hmm. go through a myriad of relationships that mm-hmm. have really shocked me as a human being, as a woman, my core body. The things that trauma um, sort of the way that trauma can select your path, you allow it to continue to not get down. You know, if you don't break away from it, if you don't own your own story, that's absolutely true. And, um, yeah, no, and, um, I think nowadays with, um, the new generation coming up, um, people are a lot more expressive of what they're going through. And they're more into healing. And I, I think if I could encapsulate what's going on nowadays, it would be kind of take out this one person, this guy, and he's Asian, and he goes, why don't we ever get angry at Generation um, X? Yeah, Generation X, right? Mm-hmm. And he's saying that, and then the lady goes, first of all, uh, we are not the bigger person. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's saying, what is He's like, we're not the bigger person. We, none of us were allergic to freaking gluten. And she just goes into the tangent. And we, um, were, we were adults. You know, we grew up in the generation where, you know, our parents were working in factories. I mean, I had the, the pleasure that my mom was to stay at her mom, so I had my mom at home. But that cost me five years away from my mom. My mom had to be it, you know? And um, my mom worked in factories. My mom's fingers were chopped off in one of those factories. You know, because, um, and those are just one of so many, but that generation was the generation of, you know, parents meeting at five o'clock in the morning, the child is home by three, the parent is alone, and to eight, you don't open that door, there were no microwaves, there were no, you have to, as if they open sandwiches, but if you get it all, you pone el arroz, you pone la bichuela, until I get back, or they have a So we grew up a lot earlier. We had a whole lot of time of being supervised time. Did your parents in the home? Well, if I can up. So you and were playing as the You have all of that in the, in the book, correct? Uh, not necessarily because my parents were very strict. I wasn't that kid that was hanging out in front of the building, you know. You know, my parents were big on eh, apartamentos no no se we didn't hang out in front of the building. I mean sometimes, you know, but and I'm grateful that I see some of the stuff that's going on in our communities right now and I'm yes, grateful sir. that my parents brought me up that way. Um yeah, and I had to stay at home mom, but I know that a lot of my parents didn't. So they had a lot of unsupervised, you know, time. And they were able to do a lot of the things that I couldn't do. But I, 
I still do. <laughs> you know, as we all did at some point. We all did. You know, um, I I worked in the community by the age of thirteen. I was already working. You know, I uh, yes, and then by sixteen, I already had year round work. By the age of seventeen, I was already a supervisor, supervising young people that were literally a year younger than, than myself. So, um, I, you know, from the politicians, and that's what I'm saying, as the community decided, growing up, the I was involving, so is the community. You know, mm-hmm. by the time I got to my 20s, school board, court partners, hobby land, all these iconic stores that we grew up with were not part of the community. We saw the first minute and we um, collected official, and we put the set of the first one of the assembly. And I was part of all of that. People a lot into it. I, I hope, um, you know, some um, pages to it because the book is written about self discovery. Sure. So uh, I'm going to read one quick excerpt from the book, and we're going to discuss it as brief as we can, of course. Let me take a look. Okay. She she has a lot of work. (laughs) Again, if you don't know who she is. Please check her out. And she was plugged. Um, her book dropped the newest one on Loving Me. Watch it tonight. A memoir. A memoir. Of a girl. Of a girl. I'm going to change the title just for you. Just for me. Just for me. Yes. Okay. Dios me libre. Dios me libre. Dios me libre. The best moment. Mm-hmm. Ah, la tecnología. María. All right, so here we go. And, uh, all right, so we're going to do uh, the whole shebang, but the ladies have already introduced herself. We've been 20 minutes along into this interview. <laughs> minus seven minutes of disconnect, or nine minutes of disconnect. <laughs> We're having fun. We're having fun. All right. So, uh, it's called from the book. I'm loving me a number of girl. So we're going to talk about something called the time project. Whoa. No, we're not talking about Frankie's time project. He's got his own issues. All right, here we go. Here's an excerpt from this Here we go. There was a point in my life I thought that my sole purpose was to rehabilitate all kinds of They were not drug addicts, but activists. You've heard of these people, the type of man that would be unwelcome in your mother's home. Kind of man that makes you think that becoming a lesbian is a better option than dealing with one of them again. I, okay, yes, I, I rehabilitate. Once the rehabilitation process is complete, they would need to live a normal, happy life with the next woman, that, as that is my last month. Okay, so. It sounds like you experienced what they call uh, baby birth syndrome. <laughs> uh, the savior complex syndrome. Exactly. Which is all part of trauma. Exactly. Now, in the book, I talk a lot about women thinking that we're in the current of this is 60 people. I know. But that's what, that's what trauma is not. So basically, mm-hmm. as you read, in the book, you're going to find the connections that many of these in my science project have been done. Um, and it was a 
because it's a very sad story. Sad from the beginning to the end of it, but I learned a lot. But mm-hmm. yeah, we our trauma connects us to all these men that are emotionally unavailable that probably share the same views as we do. They probably have a mother who now they're connected to someone who has a father wound or both or may have abandonment and how the how that shows up for men and women is different. So you have all these dynamics where, you know, we're pouring all of you into relationships that are not going to work out. Okay. This particular scene, this is kind of an introduction because out of all, of all the stories that, that I share in the book, this one is, you know, like, like fate is destiny did it, really did a number. It wasn't supposed to be good. You know what I mean? It was supposed to work out. No, I'm sorry. Because of your link. Sorry. Well, you, you know, once people read it, they don't understand it. But up until I met him, I thought that I was my business. To be able to see all this man, he was, he was one of the good things. But faith in to be, that's just part of the journey. So, yeah.